What is it, you guys? It's Violet Telly here, and welcome back to Let's Catch a Vibe. Now, I hope everyone's feeling great, feeling amazing, feeling vibey. <sighs> you guys can already tell by the title of the video. This is going to be a spoiler review of The Batman. Now, I'm a bit late on this, but you'll know why in a second. Pretty much, I went to go and see the film on the 4th of March. Went to go and see it at 9.15 in the morning. Pretty much the first showing that was around by me. Second of all, I went to go and see it in the evening of that day. And then I went to go and see a third time yesterday. And uh, I can't, I can't, I just can't lie. Like my raw thoughts, the film was a 10 out of 10. Now, I'm going to start by saying I love the direction that Matt Reeves went in. For me, this is like a raw, gritty Batman noir detective story. That's literally what it is. I mean, 80% of the movie, he doesn't speak. You see, yeah, 80% of the movie, he doesn't speak. The other 25% you see him as Bruce Wayne, like, it really is, it gives you, like, a kind of a small little glimpse into Batman's head, exactly what he, you know, exactly how he feels and about certain things. And obviously this is, like, his second year being Batman, so, yeah, he's not getting everything perfect, but he has obviously shown that he is the Batman that we're going to learn to know. But anyway, let's go over characters, right. Robin Pattinson as Batman. 10 out of 10, smashed it, absolutely perfect, literally, like, I, I can't think of anyone else better than Christian Bale, better than um, Michael Keaton, I'm going to say, and that's very controversial, because I actually do love Michael Keaton and Val Kim as Batman as well, mm, is it better than Val Kim as Batman, oh, I don't know, it's a very close second, very close, but anyway, Batman, absolutely amazing. Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman, absolutely amazing. She had her own little twist in the film where you find out that Carmine Valcone's her, her mom, and um, her mom, <laughs> her dad, which is very interesting because it gives her own little plot where she has to team up with Batman to take him down. Um, again, the romance is there. They obviously, obviously have kisses and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I really feel their chemistry. I really do feel their chemistry. Um... Yeah, just I'd like to see a return. I think she has signed on to return. Um, Colin Farrell as the Penguin. If you didn't know, obviously, Colin Farrell is the Penguin. I kind of saw and I kind of heard his voice through it, especially when he's, um, I think, just before the car chase, um, when it's like raining, you can hear his voice. Anyway, I knew it was Colin Farrell, even if you didn't throughout the makeup. Absolutely amazing. Can't wait to see his performance in his own... Um, spin-off show called the penguin pretty much where he deals with the power vacuum and the power struggle after the batman film um and we're pretty much going to see him rise through the ranks and become like a proper mob boss and stuff like that you know um alfred was amazing forgot the actor's name but absolutely amazing obviously had the love there and the you know the raw parenting feel of yeah he, he's really concerned about bruce but obviously he's helping him on his crusade as well um i'm trying to think the city the city's a main character in this film like you can't go anywhere without the city it's raw dark grim neon lights um just oh my god oh it's so good but anyway uh did i mention is there anyone else i missed anyone else i missed oh um is it paul Tano? anyway the guy that played the riddler this riddler is a mix between Jigsaw and uh, what's his name? Saw. Yeah, it's it's a mix between Jigsaw. Got some elements of the um, Jim Carrey in there when you know he's bouncing around, he's hopping around and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, the old this 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 Riddler don't play, man. This Riddler don't play at all. No shits given in his um in his pursuit of um pretty much um there's been a giant setup um for for Bruce Wayne's for Thomas Wayne's father basically they set up this billionaire um renewal fund where it was going to help orphans and stuff like that and obviously there's a bit of a plot in the film where you find out that all that was a lie obviously um because pretty much Thomas Wayne gave away the Wayne house for orphans. And obviously, Paul Dano was one of the orphans that was in that in that um, thing. And all around the house, obviously, there was still the photos of the family. So everyone was always thinking about, you know, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne. And they're all like, you know, oh, his parents died. They feel bad for him. But obviously, the Riddler was just like, hold on a minute. 
you know, why is the spotlight on them? Why is the spotlight not on us? You know what I mean? He's, you know, he's a rich kid living in a tower because they've obviously moved to Wayne Tower. He's living in the tower, looking down, and obviously it's 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 more of an authority thing. Um, if anything, obviously, you know, he just doesn't like it that he grew up. Um, nobody ever paid attention to him. Now they do pay attention to him. But yeah, uh, I spoke about characters, the way this film was shot as well. Even from the trailers, I think most people knew that the film was going to be visually pleasing. I'm not going to lie. Yo, my nipples were hard the whole way through the film. Like, it's raining all the time. Batman will be... You'll see, you'll see him as Bruce Wayne. And then, boom, instant scene transition. He's Batman talking to Gordon. Like, it just keeps you going. There's no slow pacing issues. It just keeps you going, keeps you going. You're just in it for the three-hour long haul of just Batman, Batman, Batman. One of the things that I did really didn't like about the Dark Knight um, or the Nolan trilogy is that it was like too much Bruce Wayne. The fight scenes were terrible, but yeah, in this scene, in this in this film, the fight scenes they choreographed well. I gotta give a big shout out to the choreographers on the fight scenes and stuff. So yeah, I've gone through characters, set pieces, really shot well. Um, uh, and one of the interesting things is that a lot of people, a lot of the things in here have different origins or they have a different take on it, which I did like. You know, I did like that the, that the Waynes weren't exactly shot by Joe Chill. It was more of an assassination thing because obviously you come to find out that uh, Martha Wayne was in and out of these in and out of uh, like sane asylums and that. And obviously Thomas Wayne did what he did um, because a reporter found out about the renewal fund and obviously he went to Carmine to get him to shut him up. Because obviously him being a reporter. And he didn't want it to get out. Because obviously Martha Wayne is an Arkham in this film. And obviously Thomas Wayne's a Wayne. So the two families joined together. You know, pretty much like the most powerful people in the city. Um, but yeah, the car. The car. Oh my god. The car was uh, the car was disgusting. I don't even need to tell you any more than that. The car was disgusting. And I want one. And I need to know how to steal one. But hey... <laughs> So yeah, I've gone through the car, set pieces, characters, acting was really done well. I didn't feel like there was any lines that were cheesy or, you know, put there for a laugh. I just felt like it was all raw and generic. But yeah, absolutely amazing. Can't wait to see the GCPD um, spin-off of this film in their own TV series, the HBO Max one. Again, can't wait to see the joke. Um, the joke. Ah, actually, that reminds me. Can't wait to see the Penguins spin-off series. But it's not really a spoiler because this is a spoiler review. But anyway... The person that's in the cell is played by the actor that played Druig in the in the new Eternals film. The one that can control people's minds. But yeah, pretty much you see the Riddler at the end of the film in Arkham speaking to a guy in a cell. And it's the Joker. Because you can tell by the messed up hair, you can just about see the smile on his face. And yeah, it really gives you a sense of, oh shit, like, he's met the Joker now. So the next film's going to be like, Batman's going to see... I hope they save the Joker till the end. Which would be really cool. I know Robert Pattinson has signed up has signed up for like another two films, which would be really nice to see it more flushed out and stuff. But yeah, overall this film was just I couldn't find a flaw with it. Could not find a flaw with it. Except for one nitpick, but it's really, really, really a nitpick. The point where Batman's escaping from the GCPD, um, and he uses like the flight scoot, like you know, like the squirrel flying suit. I would have liked if he'd actually done the classic jump, spread the wings and actually glided through the city. But I know why they went for that though. Kind of like the base jumping hint from like Batman Begins and stuff. But yeah, other than that, that's the real nitpick. That's the real nitpick. And it's probably a second nitpick is that I want it to be longer. I was literally on the edge of my seat. I was like, what? I was like, where is it? I want the rest. I want the rest. Where is it? And man, when I say you really feel like... You really see the humanity of Batman like he's a human being. He gets knocked out twice. The first one, I think, was when he got knocked out by the bomb by the car that crashed through the church during the mayor's funeral. That obviously knocked him out because he took it point blank to the face. That knocked him out. The second one is when he gets a full point blast from a shotgun in the chest and you see all the pellet damage and everything and it knocks him out. And that was a really good scene as well where he injects what looks like a neon formula into his leg and then he literally goes Aah! and just goes nuts and lazy on this guy and obviously commissioner gordon has to rip him up that's where i forgot commissioner gordon 
Really likes the chemistry between him and Batman. You know, he's working with Batman because he understands what he's all about. And he understands his crusade. He brings him into crime scenes. And yeah, everyone's just like, why are you trusting this guy? Why are you trusting the guy? He's like, listen, he's with me. And like, even when the cops are like, what are you doing here? Like, Batman doesn't even talk. He just turns around and goes... And just looks at people. He doesn't even say a word. And by that, you can literally just tell people are like, oh, 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 oh shit. <laughs> Again, another probably thing to add is the detectivity. Yeah, detectivity. The detective um, aspect of this film is hundred percent. I'm not banging on saying it's the best film in the world, but it is literally the best comic book adaptation of a hero that I have seen, clean to the T. Other than that, probably like Black Panther and Captain America in the MCU that were like hundred percent accurate. But yeah, honestly, I, I really, really did love this film. I hope I did speak over some of the major things. I don't really think the stuff I really missed out. But yeah, like, you know, Gordon, Robert Pattinson. I just felt the chemistry. I just really did feel the chemistry between all the characters. There was nothing that was kind of strained or it was like, okay, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of dragging this out. Everything wrapped up towards the end. And yeah, like, you know, there was riddles in there. Batman was deciphering the riddles. There was some parts where it was a bit more like Gordon was a bit more you know, active in asking questions. But obviously, you know, it's different when you're in Batman mode and you're kind of thinking and stuff like that. But yeah, literally, uh, the only two nitpicks wanted him to do the full um, cape glide. And second of all, wanted the film to be longer. That's it. That's it. I know I'm a bit late on this, guys. I do apologise. But I wanted to wait for, like, the entire weekend to be over so everyone's seen it then. So then you can do your spoiler reviews and stuff like that. But, yeah, honestly, 100% recommend going to grab... Uh, recommend, recommend, recommend to go and see this film. I did find out yesterday that it drops on HBO Max in April. So only another month you've got to wait and if, you know, if you don't want to download it and see it in, like, you know, the rough cinema cuts. But yeah, 100% recommend going to see this film. It gets a 10 out of 10 for me. Legendary rating, like, yeah, 100%. But anyway, guys, that was my spoiler review on The Batman of 2022, starring Robert Pattinson. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button. If you didn't enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the dislike button. And let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and join Team Let's Catch a Vibe. Also, I'm sorry, ugh, Team Let's Catch a Vibe. I keep doing that. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to switch on the bell notifications and get notified as soon as I upload. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and join the team Let's Catch a Vibe. Also, and yeah, pretty much uh, I said that all in reverse. But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you with this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Chill. I'm just so gassed. <laughs>